everyone what's up my name is Ron Levari and today I'd like to show you how to use the Octatrack to create a sort of a tape emulator now um, this sound is quite popular these days people actually buying tape machines and running everything all of their tracks onto the tape uh, using either tape that's a bit uh, corroded or maybe the tape machine itself is a bit faulty all these artifacts are very pleasing and they sound nostalgic it's a cool sound uh, boards of Canada I think were the first to actually do it once there was no need to use tapes anymore back in the 90s you know people just started uh, recording to digital and uh, boards of Canada um, if you're not familiar uh, please go check out uh, all of their albums um, they they recorded some tracks onto the tape and then recorded back to software and has a, a very cool sound uh, and there's a way to use uh, the Octatrack effects to do it so let's see what I have here um, I have a group of four channels it's just my preference it's not really necessary um, the first one is a through machine and I play my in this case uh, a Nord drum machine sometimes I just uh, have one microphone recording my drum kit and I send that to the Octatrack and you can hear a slight change of pitch which is the sort of tape running so as I said first one is a through machine let's in the audio the next three track two three and four are neighbors I just like to patch four tracks in a row so I can use all of the effects combined I'll keep it simple this time but you can do a lot of crazy sound design with four channels of the Octatrack so let's uh, jump actually right to track four which is where the tape machine emulator resides and for this I use the, the tape delay I say tape delay it's actually the delay right it's the it's the Octatrack delay if you go if you double click on the delay you reach the menu there is the tape option up here so you just turn it on and that means that when you mess around with the time uh, parameter you get sort of uh, the artifacts that you use that you get when you actually do this on a tape delay now it doesn't sound exactly the same but it's a it's a pretty decent reproduction for a machine that also does so much more so I'm gonna use that so if we go to channel 4 and I press the record button you'll see three triggers here and they're running all the time the sequencer is running the I am running a three-step sequence so one two three one two three one two three back and forth okay and they are automated to control the tape delay but not directly the tape delay I am actually controlling the LFO so if I go to the LFO page and I hold the first one you will see that it's controlling the depth of the first LFO it's controlling it and it's setting it to zero it will all make sense in a second <laughs> promise the second one raises it to one and the third one brings it back to zero you can also have just two uh, triggers one and zero what they're actually doing is a very tiny motion like as if I was grabbing a knob and doing this yeah and they're doing it on the time parameter of the delay so it's very subtle let's hear it without I will send nothing of course there's no sound because the direct signal is all the way down turn it up this is the regular sound slight pitch 
pitch shifting. If I play something a bit more melodic, a bit longer, you can hear where the tape sort of drops. This actually really does sound like, like sounds like Boards of Canada. to drum sounds and let's see how it's done. The LFO page for track 4 which controls the delay actually controls just one thing the time of the delay unit how fast the delays will repeat and I just have it with one of my designed wave um, design waves that I use for the LFO. I have another video, there will be a link uh, to, to the other video to explain exactly my process uh, with the LFO designed parameters, doesn't matter. You can do this straight on the delay. You can um, have one trigger controlling the time. This is not long enough here we go so you can have one trigger controlling the time next one raising into two and the third one bringing it back to one it will do the same thing I prefer to do it with the LFO for my reasons it works well with the way I program my MIDI controller, but this works just the same. So you're just creating this sort of like a nudge of the time, as if someone did this one little bit. The sequence will determine when and how often this little pitch shift will occur. So all this is fine. Now I will bring it back to only three steps so it happens all the time. This will make it a bit more noticeable. Now the same parameter is on, I don't know if you can see, is on uh, the first knob of channel 4. So if I give it a push, you can actually hear what it does when it's a, a larger motion. It, it is handy to, to play around with once you have the tape emulator rolling. So basically that's it. Once again, you go to your delay and you just automate three steps. The first step, well, this is in the LFO, but it's it's controlling the same thing once again the first step will just zero zero the parameter the second will raise it by one the third will bring it back to zero it will sound the same if you punch in whatever uh, value it could be 40 41 and 40 but then the sound will be delayed so you can use it uh, as an effect but I want to hear what I'm playing when you play like this, when this is running, it's pretty much in real time. You get your monitor in real time. Here, let's let's try it the other way. Let's uh, program the first one. Let's do it at 46. And this one will be 47 and 46 this is the only knob on my unit that's actually malfunctioning so I need to be very careful let's hear it now so I'm hitting and then the sound comes sounds exactly the same but it's delayed let's bring this back to 0 1 and 0 manageable if you're very particular about zero late near zero latency when you play and record and monitor 
maybe don't listen directly to to what you're playing but for me this works so this is sort of like the tape uh, delay used just for the, the tape uh, function. Let's see what happens in the other four tracks, which helps me get this vintagey sound. The first track has uh, an EQ, which is linked to the LFOs. So I have th the three LFOs co uh, controlling the high gain, mid gain, and low. And the three LFOs are controlled with the th first three knobs of my controller. So here, I usually boost a bit of mid and cut a bit of bass and treble. The, <clears throat> the second slot for uh, the effect has a filter, which I'm not using. I'm only... I only have it here to use uh, its distortion. There's distortion option inside. I have it to sort of just quarter in, quarter turn in. I find that this distortion, you know, it. I, I'm, I could be wrong, and this is the exact same distortion that's on the distortion effect. I don't know, the filter effect sounds a bit more relaxed to me, so I like to use this as sort of a, in, like an invisible filter. So it's on, <clears throat> and I'm not, using, I'm not using the filter for anything else, although I could. Instead of the EQ, I could use this, it's cool. But let's bring this back for now. So mids are up, highs and lows are cut a little bit. Channel number two has, uh, again, a filter also with a bit of distortion. I like them in a chain. And it has a lo-fi effect. And I'm using some parameters, I mean, the distortion, uh, the BRR, the bitrate, and the SRR. So let's add some distortion. Now that's the real distortion. You take this up, bring the volume down. It's pretty aggressive. And now the beat, beat rate goes down a bit. Just a little bit. Uh, just a little bit just to create some erosion, I guess. third track has a spring reverb great for nostalgic sounds just a little bit i think we can actually use that filter on track one And track number four, the last one, has the tape emulator. I like to have it in the end because, you know, if I was recording this, I would have been recording to tape. So reverb is first, and then the delay, which again is just used as, as a tape. Now, of course, you do have some uh, in in the last. You do have some slots that are not used. So I do have a compressor here, on ch on channel four, just before the reverb. Um, it's not. Uh, it's right now. Uh, it's very subtle right now, but you know you can crank it up if you if you like this effect.
So that's it. That's the tape emulator. Uh, I hope this was clear. If you do have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you. And if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing and I will see you next time. Thank you.